Would you believe I recorded this whole thing with voice and everything, but the microphone was off. So here we are in post. Okay, so today we are making billboards and the basic idea is we're going to have a bunch of two-dimensional images projected in 3D. We're going to have the med kit and we're going to put lights at these positions. So to start with, I'll just put in a little bit about the mathematical concept behind a billboard. All right, so the basic idea of a billboard is we have our 3D space and our player is somewhere in the space. Here they are. They have some sort of height above the ground and they're looking at some direction. And um, our object that we're drawing, we put it over here, is at a different sort of space, just making this a little more visible. And if we drew it with no sort of rotation at all, it would just be a flat sort of 2D image just there in space. But there are sort of two things that happen. One thing is we kind of turn it horizontally, oops, to face the player. And then the other thing is we tilt it sort of vertically to face the player. That's a horrible diagram, so I'm going to sort of space it out a little bit more. So let's look at the horizontal rotation. So this is happening in the XY plane. So just pretend that our player is over here. And for reference, we'll say there's some, that's where the X axis direction is. Okay, so we'll say our plane is here. If the plane had no rotation at all, it would just be running along the Y axis. Okay. From the player to the object, there will be some angle. We'll call that theta in the XY plane. And that angle theta is the same angle that the object will have to rotate around so that it's facing the player. So what we do is we work out the direction that the object is from the player. We use arc 10. So remember arc 10 is um, based on opposite over adjacent. So in other words, the Y separation and the X separation. We'll see how we use that. And then we'll rotate the object around by that angle. Then if we look at things vertically. So what I'm doing is I'm going to compress the XY plane into like an R line. So this is the distance. This is the magnitude. Um, that's the square root of X squared plus Y squared. We'll have the Z plane here. Okay, so again, we'll say the player is at some point and we'll draw our reference line and then we'll say, okay, there's an object here that's with no rotation. So similarly, there's a direction that the thing is from the player. And then we can find an angle of elevation. We'll call that phi. And that angle of elevation is the, uh, to compensate, we need to rotate by that angle in order to be facing the player. So it's a combination of these two angles. Make sure that the plane is always sort of turning to face the player wherever they are. Okay, let's get into it. So now we've got that, let's get into it. The first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to create a billboard class, basically. So we'll have a billboard.h and a billboard.cpp. So for our billboard class, we will have a position and we'll keep track of the transformation matrix. And it'll be very simple in the constructor. We'll just take in the position and and we'll have an update function, which 
takes the player's position and based on the player's position updates the um, the model transform. So you can see here we're using arc tan to get theta, the angle on the horizontal xy plane, and phi, that's the altitude angle that we'll use to rotate the billboard. After we've done this, we will go ahead and set the model transform. Once that's done, the billboard class is created, we can use it to store the set of medkits. At this point, there's just gonna be one medkit, but we'll still store it in a vector. On the engine side, we'll then need a material and a mesh. For the material, nothing needs to change. We'll just load that medkit texture. However, for the mesh, we're going to need to create a billboard mesh class to, um, to represent that. So we're setting this up now. The billboard will use almost the same code as the object mesh class, only difference is we know the vertex count is 6 and we will hard code the vertex data. By default, the billboard's position should be lining along the y axis and up and down on the z axis. We'll also have a normal which is pointing back in the negative x direction.
we can then create that medkit mesh and save it in the engine. So at this point, we have our material and mesh set up and good to go. And now we're ready to draw. So we loop through all of the med kits in the scene, load their corresponding model transforms, and yeah, draw them. Remembering, of course, that we also need to set the uh, med kit material before drawing and the uh, bind the vertex array object for the med kit mesh. And now we have it, but it starts to look a little strange. As we get closer, the rotation doesn't look quite right. So what's going on here? Notice that as we get closer, the med kit almost seems to vertically rotate the opposite way. So that's easy enough to change. We can just go and flip the phi calculation around. So now it's sort of rotating properly, but then when we go on the side, it does this weird thing. So this is something called gimbal lock. When we have a bunch of composite transformations, a bunch of rotations working together, um, the order of transformations, they can interfere with each other. We can actually demonstrate this. If we remove both components of the rotation and just do one rotation at a time, for instance, we just rotate um, vertically, so just phi, then this is working properly. And on the other hand, if we just rotate um, horizontally, so by theta, then this is also working properly. So then how do we deal with this gimbal lock? Well, one approach is to simply split the rotations into separate transformations. And now that's all working as expected. Looks pretty nice. So the next step is to make lights. But there's actually going to be a little bit of refactoring involved here. Earlier, I was using white for the specular highlights to make them more obvious, but they're starting to get annoying. So I'll just switch that out for the light color. And similarly, I was using textures with no alpha. So we can get the alpha component by simply sampling. And incorporating that in the final color calculation at the end of the function. If we look here, the edges of the med kit still aren't transparent. So we need to go into the engine class and modify something there. Firstly, we enable blending, alpha blending. 
And then we also set the blend function. The way the blend function works is we take two numbers, the source factor and the destination factor. So the final color will be source factor times destin, uh, sorry, source factor times source color plus destination factor times destination color. Imagine we take a fragment with alpha 20%. We want the final color to be 20% of the incoming color plus 80% of the current color. So our source factor will be the source alpha and the destination factor will be one minus the source alpha. And now our med kit is working properly. Pretty happy with that. So we can go on to looking at the lights. I want to represent each light with one of these images. I'll put them in a billboard and I'll also multiply, multiply that light by the color of the light. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna need another shader which doesn't have lighting because we can't put lights on lights. It looks bad. We have rounding errors and things. So a few steps here, but the first step is I'm gonna to need to make new shaders without lighting. We'll start with the fragment shaders and vertex shaders from the um, from the original lit shader. For this, we're just going to need the vertex position and texture coordinate, no lighting stuff. And the only thing we're going to output is the fragment texture coordinates. We will need the whole model, uh, <laughs> model view projection matrices. And yeah, that's it. Then for the vertex shader, we'll grab the original and take a look at it. So running from top to bottom, we do not need the point light. We only need the fragment texture coordinates. We do not need the lights or camera position, but we are gonna add a uniform uh, tint color. And what we'll do is we'll tint the fragment according to that color, which means we will not need the calculate point light function that can go. And yeah, all of this can go. The main function is actually incredibly simple. All we do is take the texture, and multiply it with the tint. Earlier, I was using light objects to represent the lights, but now I sort of want a hybrid. I want something that has position, color, and strength, but also has a model matrix transform. So we could use inheritance. I'm not gonna do that. What I'll do instead is I'll make a new class called a bright billboard, and that will be a combination of all of those things.
we can get away with using the same billboard mesh for the bright billboard because it has three locations. The um, position, texture coordinate, and normal. But we simply don't need to use the normal attribute, that's fine. Let's refactor our engine. I'm gonna split the shader stuff into a few stages. First, we have the shader creation, and then we'll query the location of uniforms in the shaders and save those. And then there's a bunch of data that can kind of be set once. So we'll have a function to handle that as well. We'll also take in the width and height of the screen for that function, because we want to um, set the projection transform and we'll need that data in order to do that. Let's lay this out. We're going to have a lit shader, an unlit shader, And we're also going to have a bunch of locations. So we have the camera position, the model matrix location. The view matrix location. And then similarly for the unlit shader, we'll have a bunch of locations there as well. But it's important to note we have the tint location there. Okay, so let's go through it. The first step is we'll create the lit and unlit shaders. We'll then query both of the shaders to get the locations of their uniforms. And finally, we'll set the one time data for both of our shaders. This is basically the projection matrix. Our constructor is now looking a lot cleaner. This will help us extend the engine in future. Now again, the name of the game in engines is materials and meshes. So we'll go ahead and create a uh, light mesh based on a billboard.
and a light material as well. We're almost there, but the render loop, render function needs a bit of restructuring. The first thing we do is we clear the color buffer and depth buffer, and then we sort of set all the info we need to set for our lit shader. Since we've saved the model matrix and view matrix locations, we can pretty much use the same code, but it just becomes a lot cleaner. It's also uh, more performant because we're not querying things on the fly that we don't need to. With that done, we can now look at the unlit shader and the process is very similar. We use our unlit shader program. Send in the same view matrix. Use our light material and then bind our light mesh. Then we loop through all of the lights in our scene. Send their color to the shader so that the lights can be colored. Send their model transforms to the shader so they will appear in the correct positions and locations. Positions and rotations, I mean. I don't know what positions and locations is meant to mean. Anyway. And then we go ahead and draw the mesh. And there we have it. Our program looks nice. Each of the lights is visible and they are colored according to their color. Here's the green one. And up here we have a teal one, slightly teal bulb. And that's it. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this session. Let me know what you thought of this video style. I kind of did it out of necessity because like I said, my microphone was off. But anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll yeah see you again in the next one. Bye.